Hi, so welcome to lesson number seven, module four of the Big Data and Hadoop Developer course. So in this particular lesson, we'll be having a look at yarn architecture and job execution. So let's quickly recap the previous lesson. In the previous lesson, we have learned what is yarn and the architecture of yarn. So in this particular lesson, we're going to have a look at the components of yarn and understand the yarn application execution flow. So as we understand the three main components of yarn are resource manager, node manager, and application master. Well, the resource manager is a cluster level daemon in the sense usually you will have only one resource manager in a cluster. However, you can have an active and standby setup and it is having a long life high quality hardware. Now, since the execution of a job is key uh, component and you cannot afford to have a failed resource manager, usually this is built on industry standard servers. Now the node manager will usually be a slave daemon and it is usually one per data node and its duties include monitoring the resources on that particular data node. Now the application master is dynamically launched one per application and it is short life in the sense once your application is completely executed the application master is dynamically destroyed. So it will live as long as the application gets executed inside your cluster. Now if you want to understand the yarn flow we should have a look at from the beginning. So initially the client will submit a map reduce job. Now resource manager is there to accept this particular map reduce job. So it manages the resource utilization across the Hadoop cluster. Now we all understand that HDFS has resources and job artifacts among yarn components. So HDFS usually stores the data which has to be processed at this point. Now, as we understand the node manager runs on each data node and it is responsible for creating the execution container and it also monitors the usage of the container. However, the request for a new container has to be initiated by the application master. So once the application master requests for a new container, then the Resource manager will allocate the necessary resource for the same and then the node manager will create the container for the application master. Now MapReduce application master coordinates the manage MapReduce jobs and it negotiates the resource, man resource manager to schedule tasks. Let's analyze the workflow step by step. We can see now on our slide that how yarn flow is executed. First, we'll get a new application from the resource manager. We can copy all the job resource and job related information to HDFS. It last the resource manager. Is there any free space to submit the job? And if there are free space, then it copies the job resources like all the relative information regarding the query from the HDFS. Then finally, the total application is submitted to the yarn architecture or yarn framework. Now here in this next step, you can see that the resource manager job is to first create an application master. So essentially it is the MR app master that is being created in one of the not manager. The app master get the input split from HDFS. With this information, it gets in touch with the resource manager to negotiate the resources. Now in the next step, it understands the data like what like what are the input splits depending upon the job statement because every job statement will produce an input split. Now input splits are created dynamically and they are not predefined. Every data has its own record length depending upon what query we are looking at. So we have already seen the importance of input split. Now the input splits are calculated at this particular stage. So if you look at the picture right now, you can see that 
you know your resource manager is there and the resource manager is talking to a node manager because the node manager has to continuously update the resource manager about the resource utilization of the particular node and you can see that there is the MR app master it has already contacted the HDFS to get the physical location and then it will calculate the logical splits also now from the MR app master it has requested the container to be launched so you can see that there is a container which is getting launched called task JVM and there is a yarn child and the map and reduce tasks are being executed inside the same so here you can uh, have a look at the diagram in detail the client who have submitted the job also keep polling for the status so now it is the job of the application master to keep sending the latest update to the client whenever they poll for the update status you can see that this when you run the job on your terminal you can see the job status in terms of percentages and step by step so the idea here is that the application master is responsible for the life cycle of the application now previously in Hadoop version 1 it was the job tracker or the master daemon responsible for life cycle management now here it has been delegated to the application master so that your resource manager is free so inside your uh, uh, resource manager you have a scheduler and an application manager now this will give you an overall example of how many application masters will be created and how they will be handling all those applications in a cluster here we have two parts in resource manager like I said the scheduler and the application manager now the application manager is helping in creating new application master whenever a new application or query is launched in the system here you can see that the application master 1 and 2 are launched maybe we have two applications running in the cluster application master 1 creates two containers called container 1.1 and 1.2 those containers are created because those blocks are lying in different node managers similarly we have application master 2 which is launching three containers 2.1 2.2 and 2.3 because the data is lying on those data nodes where the containers are getting launched now there could be a possibility that we may end up running two different queries on the same data set so what has happened in this particular case will we we'll be able to handle with one application master or we'll be using two application masters the answer is it will be using two application masters because every application or query is treated independently and there will be one application master per application so to summarize in this particular lesson we have learned the components of yarn and also the yarn application execution flow that's all for this lesson If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to raise a support ticket. Thank you.